Hello everyone! How you guys doing, right? Wait, wait, what's this? There's a loose cable here on my camera. This aggression should not stand, man. Uh, yeah, so let me fix this. Anyway, I'm out for a little bit of a walk here. And, uh, yeah, my ear itches. Looks weird, right? Yeah, I'm out for a little walk. And I got this list here. What's this, Steve? What's this? Wouldn't you like to know? Well, I was watching uh, videos by uh, uh, Larry Graves, a Canadian stud muffin. And uh, uh, you know, Larry likes to talk uh, a lot about the Beatles. He loves the Beatles. He's a great, a uh, huge Beatle fan. And uh, so many, 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 if not most of all his videos uh, talk about the Beatles, about their albums, about the individual Beatles, and uh, about, you know, their solo albums, about everything. And uh, so I was watching Larry. And it got me thinking, uh, you know, I think Larry has a great wealth of knowledge about the Beatles. And I wonder just how much I know, because, you know, I was around when the Beatles first appeared on American television. We're going to get to that shortly, because what I got is a list of ten questions that I made to myself. I'm just imagining, if somebody was out there, and they wanted, if they had questions about the Beatles, what could I say? Could I answer these questions? Could I answer them accurately? Uh, would there be a, a bias, a slant towards one beetle or the other? Let's find out. And here we go with the questions. Which beetles were the best looking? Well, obviously I wasn't into beetles or I clearly would have won the prize, you know, but which, or uh, what? This? I'm trying to look like Cyclops in the X-Men. My, uh, I gotta blow up the, the uh, I, I wear this when I'm riding my bike, and, um, but uh, I'm not riding my bike because the air in the tires is low, and I did buy a pump, a bicycle pump that I could do myself, uh, but it's kind of hard, and uh, I don't feel like doing it right now. Besides, it's a nice evening for a walk. Probably be getting dark soon, maybe within a half hour. So let's get started while we can still read this darn list. Where were we? Which beetle was the best looking? Well, you know, I think in the early days, uh, everybody said, and you know, and I'm not attracted to guys. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Now, <laughs> but uh, uh, my understanding, based on the screaming girls of the early days and what I've heard over the years was that Paul uh, was the best looking beetle, okay? Yeah. Now, um, although I think around the time of Let It Be, uh, George became so darn good looking with his mustache and long hair. What is that going up in the background? Well, I thought I saw something. Oh, it's just a, it's just a trail right there. But you know, uh, we used to could see, uh, from this location, we used to be able to see the space shuttles go up. Well, you still can, I think, when, uh, from Cape Canaveral. If Cape Canaveral, which is like, I don't know, 60 miles away, uh, if they uh, if they launch a missile or something, you can see it or a rocket. You can see it go up just like that, a plume like that. So I saw this and I thought, well, maybe that was a missile going up, but no, it wasn't or anything. A missile? I mean, a uh, rocket. Heaven forbid, a missile, right? Where were we? Okay, we're gonna celebrate the Beatles. See, I put balloons up and everything. Balloons. Okay. So yeah. Uh, best looking, uh, Paul, and uh, for a little while, George there. And, uh, yeah, on the Let It Be album, look on the Let It Be album, I just remember I had friends of mine who were like females, and they like said, oh, he's so good looking, he's so good looking, so yeah, that's what I base this on. Okay, do you think Paul's music today, do you think Paul's music fits in today's world? Interesting, because I was listening to uh, the first Paul McCartney album I bought in decades, which is Egypt Station, which I thought was a brilliant album. I was only amazed. The thing was, I heard a few tracks of this uh, on the internet radio, and I uh, thought, man, that sounds great. That's the best I've heard Paul sound in many, many years. Yeah, because I quit buying his albums because I thought, especially after you know he did McCartney, which I liked, and it was banned on the run, but everything else around that era, I just thought Paul just totally lost it. He lost touch. Uh, you know, they say John Lennon was the genius of the group. Yeah, maybe, but, um, and John had his, all of his songs weren't great, but a lot of them were. Same with Paul. I mean, he wrote Yesterday, after all. 
And uh, but this new album, Egypt Station, I was utterly impressed. And uh, so I put it on my Christmas list. And one of my daughters, you know, my daughters Judy and Kathy, one of the, one of them gave it to me for a Christmas gift. And I love this album. Yeah. So I, you know, I hear some people saying, "Well, he's lost his voice. He's lost his voice." voice. I don't think he's lost his voice. I think his voice is terrific for a 76 year old guy. He has a great voice. I can't sing anywhere near as good as that. And um, so yeah, his voice may be a little more husky, but uh, he, he actually kind of adds to the emotion of the songs. Uh, I, uh, I think this new album, Egypt Station, is brilliant. And uh, I just think he's, I think he's a terrific voice. For a 76-year-old guy, this guy's great. Compared to a 22-year-old guy, you can't compare. It's not the same voice. It's the 6 it's the 76-year-old guy's voice. But for a 76-year-old guy, any 22-year-old would be proud to have such a great voice. So, yeah, I, I think he, I think he really sounds great. He doesn't miss a note, and, uh, yeah, it sounds great. Okay, do you think Paul feels idolized. Does it... How did I get... Well, did I get ahead of the... I'll, I'll skip ahead. I look like I missed the early question. I had this on the wrong side. That's fine. You think Paul feels idolized and does it stoke his ego? You think Paul has a big ego? What do you think? If you were one of the most famous, popular, and influential musicians of the last hundred years, do you think that would affect your ego? Certainly, but you know, Paul never looks that way. He never looks uh, arrogant or he never, you know, he, he just, uh, he always seems like just a normal guy. And uh, that's one thing I like about him, you know. He's, uh, he's just always, he's just always, it just seems like Paul. Just like some guy, you know, you love to have him for your next door neighbor. He's just a good guy and he, he doesn't, you know, bad mouth anybody. He doesn't talk bad about former Beatles, including John, you know, who they had their rows, you know, but, uh, so I don't think so. I think considering all the fame and adulation uh, that's been heaped on this guy for all these years, uh, he still remains pretty much like an average guy. Okay. Ah, uh, don't worry, worry. Which Beatle was the best? Who broke up the Beatles? Who broke up the Beatles? This is a decades-old question. Was it Yoko? Yeah? Yeah? Who was the first Beatle to walk out? I think it was Ringo that walked out of a recording session. He said he was, he was done, he was fed up, and he came back like two weeks later. I believe that's right. Um, I think they all kind of walked out at one time or another. Um, and John, I don't think, really walked out. He just... He just didn't pursue any further Beatles projects to the point where, in 1970, I believe it was, uh, I remember, I still have the newspaper clipping. I don't know if I showed it at the end of this video or not, but it's in my in, in a drawer in my room somewhere. The newspaper uh, clipping where it says, Paul, Paul bows out of Beatles, McCartney bows out of Beatles. I think what the, what the title of the clipping is. What happened was, Paul just announced that, uh, the Beatles was no long to get longer together as a group. He didn't say I quit or anything, but it's just that he hadn't heard from uh, John in so long. It was kind of a mutual understanding. It was all over uh, after the brilliance, the brilliance of their Abbey Road album, uh, the last great album they did. Let It Be was great, but Abbey Road was beyond great. Abbey Road was an absolute masterpiece, and I, I think they all knew they were about to split up at that time, and they all got together and put in and did the most magnificent job they'd ever done on an album. So that album really stands out like a work of art. Okay, is Canadian Stud Muffin the world's greatest Beatles fan? Yeah. What's, which song is the most, huh? I can't read my own writing. Unlistenable. A uh, couple of, of choices here. Revolution 9 and You Know My Name, Look Up My Number. Okay. Revolution 9. 
<laughs> you can call it a song if you want. I mean, it was clearly a work of art um, in the sense that Paul and I guess I mean John and I guess Yoko meant it, especially you know John obviously it's his song, but it's a lot of works that a lot of clippings of all kinds of random stuff, but somehow relevant random stuff to the time in which they were living and what was going on in their lives. And it does have a certain rhythm that keeps going back to number nine, number nine, number nine, number nine. It's almost like Ringo's there going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it does have a certain rhythm. And, uh, but, you know, not something you want to be you know, out, you want to dance to with your date, you know, on any particular night. You know my name, look, from, look up my number. It's an odd song. When I first heard it, I, I bought the Beatles the single, the 45 RPM single of the Beatles' Let It Be, back in 1970. I bought that, and on the back side was, you know my name, look up my number. It's like, you know my name, look up my number, you, 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 you know my name, etc., etc. And it was pretty, uh, that was pretty strange. It's just them having a ball, uh, having a ball in the studio, having fun, and just having a blast. Almost like... Yeah, I don't know. At the end of their careers, they thought, well, let's just have a little fun and go out on a good note. And uh, so it's fun. No, it's not unlistenable at all. The only reason I, I put it, I comparing it here to Revolution 9 is they can't be re compared, actually. But in the terms of some people don't like the song or didn't like it, but it's a lot of fun. It's just them having fun. It's not meant to be taken seriously, like Let It Be or Hey Jude or nowhere man or anything like that it was just a lot of fun um, if John and George had lived would the Beatles have reunited yes I strongly believe they would have um, because these guys were like brothers and they loved each other and they went through a lot together and besides they were all great musicians who were totally compatible and made some of the greatest music of all time in rock music or any other uh, form of music so I do believe at some point they would have reunited for a concert or you know maybe not a tour but at some point they would have gotten together and they, they did kind of reunite over the years they were all together on Ringo's uh, song on one of his albums I'm the greatest and they played on each other's albums Ringo was always uh, uh, appearing on John's uh, music but yeah they uh, I think I think at some point you know, they would have gotten back together. That's my opinion. Um, do you remember the first time you saw or heard the Beatles? First time I ever saw the Beatles was in 1960, was it 63 or 64? See, darn, I should know this. It's 63 or 64, but it was the first time they appeared on Ed Sullivan in the United States. And my, I was living on a marine base at Cherry Point, North Carolina uh, with my two brothers, uh, Fred and Richard. And uh, my mom and my stepdad, Warren, who was a staff sergeant in the Marine at the time, and my brother said, uh, we got to watch Ed Sullivan, the Ed Sullivan show tonight. Ed Sullivan being a great, the, one of the greatest variety shows of all time. The Beatles are going to be on there. I didn't know anything about the Beatles, but I guess they'd heard something, maybe on the news, because there was a big ruckus when the Beatles arrived in the United States at the airport. And there was this, all this hype about the Beatles, the Beatles. What's the Beatles, right? So I didn't know. So... Uh, we're gonna watch the uh, we're gonna watch uh, the Beatles and Ed Sullivan. Here I am, I was seven years old. I was in the second grade, and um, so I'm watching the Ed Sullivan show with whatever they had, Stupo Gigio or Acrobats or whatever they had going on. All I remember is well, the one thing that I really do remember was, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles, and they came on. They did "I Want to Hold Your Hand" and and some other songs, and man, I just. I just nearly jumped out of my seat. I, I just thought they were, I just thought their music was so exciting and so, uh, it was so full of energy and optimism and it was just, it was just, I'd never heard anything like it before and I don't think anyone else had either in this country. Uh, we'd heard rock and roll but these guys were different. Um, not just that they were British and had British accents and they were really funny and zany in their interviews but Man, when they first came on, that music was so infectious, it was just incredible. It literally changed the world. 
I mean overnight. Seriously, this is not hype or anything else. Uh, but I went to school the next day. Everyone was talking about the Beatles and all the guys started growing their hair out that very next day. So I remember it very, very well. Um, do you remember the first Beatles movie you saw? Again, in uh, Cherry Point, North Carolina, on the Marine Base, the Marine Base, uh, they had a movie theater there. And uh, I went to see the Beatles' Hard Day's Night for 10 cents. They had a little turnstile you walked through, you dropped your, dropped your dime in there, and you went in there to see the movie. And a hard day's night. It's been a hard day's night. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Somehow, not only were they great musicians, not only did they have the great Brian Epstein as their manager, but they also fell into a... I don't know who directed it. Richard Donner uh, correct, directed that movie. But anyway, I think it was, was it Richard Donner? I think so. Anyway, the Beatles... Uh, woo! That was an awesome movie. Some uh, fictionalized version of their lives showing... Uh, what it was like to be a Beatle. Everywhere they went, girls were chasing after them. and uh, They would stop in a recording studio and sing songs. And they lip sync songs on a, on a train, like an Amtrak train here, you know. But, uh, man, it was, that was so much fun. So those early days of the Beatles were so exciting, so infectious, and it really, they really changed everything. I mean, it really, it upped the bar for all other rock musicians, the rock and roll, rock and rock musicians. I really think rock and roll, when the Beatles appeared, rock and roll ended and rock music began. And yeah, it got harder and harder, more rocking, but I think the Beatles uh, changed things, so it wasn't just rock and roll. There was something else going on here, and they elevated it to the form of art. Uh, it was great before, but when the Beatles came along, it got better, and the world utterly changed, and music utterly changed forever. Okay. What else? Last question. Should Paul dye his hair? I saw something. Uh, I saw something uh, with uh, somebody took Paul McCartney back to a... Uh, there's a house there in Liverpool where Paul lived when he was young. And uh, someone, I can't think of the name of the show, but this guy, he does stuff with celebrities and... Uh, anyway, he, he took him over to this house where he used to live. He walked inside. Uh, it's been preserved as kind of a museum. Uh, house he lived when he was a little kid. And, you know, his, his, he walked in and showed his bedroom where he used to live. Showed the whole house. And, but I noticed that Paul, his hair was has streaks of white in it. Uh, not just little streaks, but pretty significant streaks of white now. Uh, and you can see the lines on his face. Uh, but he's still Paul. Looks and sounds and acts like Paul. And the shitty guy's hair. What's my opinion? In my opinion, he doesn't look too old to dye his hair. Some people, if, if they got a lot of wrinkles and they're pretty old, and then they dye their hair, especially if they dye it black. You know, his is dark brown or brown. Not really dark brown, but brown. Um, if you dye your ha you know, hair dark, uh, it makes you look even older. It shows off the lines in your face. But I think for Paul, it works, and I think, you know, yeah, dye, dye your hair, Paul. Dye your hair. I mean, ever since I saw Jimmy Page with light hair, and Jimmy with white hair, and he used to have black hair. It looks like Jimmy Page, but like old Jimmy Page. When he dyed his hair black, he looked like younger Jimmy Page. So, that's probably a, per, a purely a personal thing. I don't have to dye my hair because it hasn't started turning gray yet. I've been very fortunate. My mustache was turning gray and I, sh and I cut it, but I didn't cut it because of that reason. I cut it because BB didn't like a mustache. She didn't like kissing a, a, a bunch of hair. What? What else do you want to know? Okay, I might talk about the Beatles a little more. I'm envious because when, uh, when uh, Larry Graves... Hi, Larry! When uh, Canadian Stub Muffins does Beatles uh, videos about the Beatles, he gets thousands and thousands of views, right? No, I'm not really. I, I just, I've been watching Larry's videos, and I, I very much enjoy them. And uh, you guys check him out, Canadian Stub Muffin. He's a legend of YouTube, so check him out if you haven't already, and you should have after all these years. Um, but, uh, okay. So here's the deal. I'm gonna do another Beatles video. But I'm not gonna answer, I'm not gonna write the questions. I want you guys to answer, ask me the questions as if I'm some Beatles expert. I'm just a fan for how many years? 
64, 74, 84, 94, 2004, 2014. What? 55 years. I've been a fan for 55 years of the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, if you do the subtraction, you see that I'm 30, 34 years old. I'm 34 years old right now, and I've been listening to the Beatles for 55 years. Something like that. Okay, guys. Have a great day. And, uh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. The, the, the point was... Um, if you have any questions about the Beatles, and you want me to answer them? About testing my knowledge, or just theoretical questions, what would have happened, or what could happen if the Beatles this and that, or Paul or Ringo or George or John, um, send these questions to me and I'll answer them in my next video. So my next video will be Answer Beatles Question Video. The Lovely Daddy answers your questions about the Beatles. Just for the fun of it. Larry, you need to ask me a question too. Surely there's something I know that you don't. Give it a shot. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. And oh, I'm at the alligator. I'm at the gator lake here. I don't see any gators behind me, but this is where I, I, I usually see the most gators I usually see in this lake. I don't see anything right now. If I do, I'll come back on and and show it to you. All right, have a nice day, and thanks for tuning in. Adios, my friends. There's all the traffic here on I-4.